Okay. So now let's talk about preservatives. I know your favorite topic and my One favorite One of my topic. favorite topics, yeah. <laughs> um, why within the beauty industry is, you know, the top, well, within the beauty industry, again, you know this as much as I, you know, I do, is, is that preservatives are a very hot topic. Um, and you obviously need to use preservatives within products. So talk to me a little bit about preservatives in general mm -hmm. and then the concept of natural preservatives. Yeah, so preservatives, very hot topic, talked about a lot, maybe not talked about with the best information all the time. Um, so there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, from a responsibility standpoint, you know, it depends on the water activity in your formula and the type of product that you're working on, um, you know, determines the level of preservative you need. And in any, any product that has, you know, uh, a certain water activity, which which most of the products uh, on the shelf today do, you absolutely need to uh, put a preservative in the formula. Now, some people call things preservatives that aren't preservatives. You know, uh, the actual term in Europe means something different or means something in Europe, doesn't mean anything in the US kind of trade and commerce. Um, but in the truest sense of the word, you need a preservative to keep the product safe. Um, so if you don't have a preservative in a product with uh, the water activity that many consumer products have, um, the serum, the shampoo, the conditioner, um, you know, you could grow some harmful bugs. Yeah. You know, nobody wants to talk about it, but that's what preservatives are so there for, gross. to keep things shelf stable. And, you know, if you want to create a product that's safe for people, um, you know, there can be some acute toxicity um, with bugs. And if you look at the FDA um, website, most of the letters that they've sent to companies are based on improperly preserved products. Um, so you have to balance, you know, what sounds good from a consumer standpoint with what really has um, efficacy. And, you know, different preservatives work differently in different mm -hmm. systems. So people don't think about this, but there's a lot there's a lot that goes into a formula. It depends on, you know, the pH of the formula. It depends on um, the water activity of the formula. It depends on the use. You know, if it's in a lip balm, it's going to see, you know, repetitive use on your lips. It's different than if it's on a hair serum that, you know, you're going to touch once and put, put on your hair. So we've tried to balance that with the most efficacious preservatives um, that, are, that are really true preservatives and providing that, you know, kind of um, sleep at night um, you know, kind of safety for, for us, um, yeah. that you know you're putting a product in the marketplace that's, that's not dangerous um, sure. in any way. What preservatives are you using for the collective laboratories? So f uh, different in, in the serum versus the shampoo versus the conditioner, um, you know, because of the use. Mm -hmm. um, what we're using phenoxyethanol. Um, we're using ethyl hexoglycerin. Ethyl hexoglycerin is a booster that allows you to use less phenoxyethanol. Um, you know, so we're trying to um, to balance that. You know, the the you know the dose matters. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we got got to put the product in at the right level. Um, you know, to be efficacious from a preservative standpoint, but to not affect anything in a negative in a negative way either um, on skin feel or on sensitivity. Um, or even, you know, breaking the viscosity of, of, of the product. Okay. Grow fuller, healthier hair with ingredients from Eastern medicine and modern science. Nature, activated by science.